Hello everyone, this is Cody Lee of BlackCatBooks.org, author of I, the Dragon, Cruel and Beautiful, Rabbit Hole, Lauren Frey, and the upcoming Jaw of the Dragon. So I've been thinking a lot about the Mario movie lately. I, I would really like to go see it in theaters again, but unfortunately I haven't had time. I've had a lot of things going on, there's been a lot of problems in my personal life, but like... I have been, like, following along with the discourse online. I've seen the critics try and downplay this film. I've seen the fanboys try every possible tactic to say the, the movie is bad or terrible or won't compete with The Last of Us, with Sonic, with, I don't know, the fucking Monster Hunter movie. I've, I've seen it all, right? It's been crazy. And I even did a, a response video to Angry Joe specifically, uh, uh, a group of individuals who honestly seem off came, came off as if they were went into this movie wanting to hate it. Like the Angry Joe review was just pure trash, right? But the thing about the Angry Joe review, and the thing that really interests me about it, is how it conflicts with the Doug Walker and the Cinema Snob reviews, right? Other that guy with the glasses personalities. I, I know Angry Joe is not a that guy with the glasses personality anymore, but, like, you know, th these are people that used to, like, work alongside Angry Joe. These are people that, like, have some kind of association with them, and they're personalities that I'm fairly familiar with. So I, I actually was interested in seeing what Doug Walker and Brad Jones had to say about the Mario movie. And... They were actually fairly positive. Now, this wasn't like the – these weren't like the most glowing reviews in the world. They didn't say it was like, oh, the best movie of the year like or anything like that. But I don't think anyone really considers the Mario movie the best game, uh, best movie of the year or the best film ever made or anything like that. It's just an enjoyable Mario movie, right? That's all anybody really wanted or expected from this. And so like seeing Doug Walker and – Brad Jones praised the movie for that reason was very, very refreshing. Now, the, the curious thing about this, uh, the thing that really gets my goat, though, is just how much, how obvious it is, you know, watching, watching these videos, just how much bigger Mario fans Doug Walker and Brad Jones are. Now, like, you know, they don't play every Mario game that comes out. They don't, like, you know, talk about this, the series on their channel, but, like, you know, Doug grew up playing the game, you know, Brad Jones played through Odyssey, like, these are people with, like, actual real credibility when it comes to Mario fandom and stuff like that. Uh, Doug Walker himself is actually the person who introduced me to uh, Super Mario Adventures, a comic that I probably would have overlooked if he didn't get it such a glowing review, and he's right, like, that, that comic is amazing, right? You know, these are people who actually have an understanding and appreciation and do like the the Mario IP. Like, yeah, they're not like rabid fans, or yeah, they don't revolve their channels around the property, but they do understand the Mario IP, and they do respect it. They are fans, right? Even if they don't play every single game that comes out. Joe is not a fan. Joe is something, Joe is a straight up, like, hater of the Mario brand, of Nintendo, of Nintendo consoles, and I think that really came across in the review. As, this, as someone who desperately desperately is trying to downplay Nintendo, hate on them, and pretend that they're doing something terrible Like when, when it comes to their uh, running their business and how they handle their properties. Like it, it, It's so bizarre seeing him like not understand like basic aspects of the story. Uh, among them, like say, Bowser being in love with Peach, right? Like all three of those guys from the Angry Joe show acted like that was some like shocking thing. Like, oh, oh man, that was cringy. That that wasn't like Bowser at all. Like that was that was so weird. And you know, actual fans understand that that that's always been his motivation, right? You know, they talk that they, they talk up the whole Peach thing. They like they try and pretend that like, oh, Peach, she's such a she's such a terrible character. She could have beaten Donkey Kong. She she did everything herself. Mario didn't do anything, which is uh, not not true at all. That's like something out of a shit post from like 4chan before the movie even came out, right? It, it really felt like Joe was going to extreme lengths to take things out of context and like exaggerate and like just try and pretend this movie was not as good as it was. Right? This was not a 5 out of 10 movie by any stretch of the imagination. But Joe... Being a game critic, 
has to go out and has to do this stuff. He has to condemn Nintendo in every possible way. Like, he has to continue to pretend that Nintendo is DMCA claiming his videos, right? He has to keep pretending that, like, the Switch has no games. He has to, like, keep ignoring every Nintendo Direct, every every new Nintendo release. Uh, down And now, you know, in 2023, we're reaching the point where he's straight up downplaying the big new Nintendo films. And I really wonder if this is going to be the, um, the catalyst for what makes people, like, start turning against him. Because he's going to have to talk about the movie, right? There, there's going to be no justifying, like, not doing not doing reviews of Nintendo films, like, like he uh, justifies not being able to do, like, reviews of Nintendo games, right? Like, th there will be no getting around this. Is he really going to keep this up? Like, is he really going to keep saying that, like, Sonic the Hedgehog is better than, like, the Mario movie 2 or Donkey Kong or the Z Zelda movie that we all know is coming? Like, is he really going to keep up this facade? Is he really going to ignore Tears of the Kingdom? Is he really going to try, like, whining about weapon durability or, like, an empty open world like Adam Sessler tried to do the other day? Like, is he going to keep that up? Because I don't think it's going to work. Like, the fucker is too old to uh, to, to manipulate his audience. Like, uh, people are becoming more critical of him now. And, and I do think this is, uh, you know, I, I talked about this a little bit in regards to Angry Joe in particular. But I do, I've always said that his channel is going to strongly suffer once the cape shit uh, fanaticism ends. You know, like, once, once Marvel dies... Once we, uh, once we're in this, once uh, audiences kind of like tune out like the MCU and like what's going on with like that uh, the superhero trend in films, like Angry Joe will just have nowhere to go with this channel, all right? Because like that that was all anybody cared about him for the longest time. He was the guy you went to for like Superman rants or like you know average MCU movie reviews or like you know discussions of. This is the guy who likes Suicide Squad, all right? So, <laughs> this is the guy who defended Anna Steele. Like, one of the very few people who did this, one of the biggest Superman shills on the planet, right? Without the cape shit fad, when, like, people just tune out of, like, the, the genre completely, what is Angry Joe going to be left with? Like, his established audience? But what is he giving them? You know, other than the reviews of, like, every major film that comes out, what is he doing? You know, like... His game reviews have been terrible. Hogwarts Legacy a 10 out of 10? Are you kidding me? Like, you didn't even give up Breath of the Wild that high. You know, like, Resident Evil 4 Remake, like, better than the original when you didn't even play the original? It was just... It was... It's laughable. It's pathetic. And it has been for a long time. But, uh... I, I think, like, this might be... an ex Like, the whole Mario movie thing, um... I, I think this might be something that makes more people realize that, like, Angry Joe does have an agenda against Nintendo. He is trying to ma manipulate your opinions and try and pretend that Nintendo can't compete with uh, with other with other creators, with other filmmakers, with the, with, the, with the game creators. And it simply isn't true, as the Mario movie kind of demonstrates. Like, I think the Mario movie proves that the Mario brand is far bigger than than a lot of people give it credit for. Uh, I think this is, uh, I think Nintendo films, not video game adaptions, but Nintendo adaptions are going to be the big thing in Hollywood going forward. Like, I, I do think this is going to be the next major trend in film. And I don't think that there's anything that Angry Joe or anyone else can do to stop it.